It's a crazy idea for undergraduate uni students to build a race car from scratch. But we wanted to do more than that. We wanted to build the world's fastest electric race car. And it's been a long three years to get here. We've engineered everything for this car from the ground up. From the aerodynamic design to the manufacture of bespoke parts, everything from the drivetrain to the control systems and even the software used to run the car. And we did all of this during the pandemic. But building the car is only half the job. As engineers, we knew we had to test it, break it, fix it, and then test it again. The team have put everything they have into this project. Today, we find out if we've got what it takes to get the Guinness World Record. The fastest electric vehicle over a thousand kilometres on a single charge. The track is a 4.2 kilometre circuit. We did think it was going to be quite flat heading into it, but we have received word that it's actually quite hilly. We unfortunately don't get the Guinness World Record if it goes over 12 hours. We'll have a GoPro in the car, a GoPro on the side of the road, and they will film for all 12 hours. We've got three different timekeepers, and we have to completely seal our battery so that it cannot be charged, so that Guinness can verify that we didn't use any electricity from the grid to complete the record. I think we're just gonna have to be able to adapt really, really well and deal with any issues that come up really efficiently. Coming up to the world record, we've had some teething issues with our battery management system and we're pretty confident in the fixes that we've put in place. One of the things that we are specifically watching is the battery voltage. That's a pretty important metric as it's not a linear decline. There's actually a battery set of charge curve which has an exponential drop off towards the end of the battery life. Throughout the day we'll be looking at the power used and the energy used over time from motor temperatures to the state of the battery and these all send to the one computer core in the car and then my job is to get all that data up into the cloud and then in a way for the team as a whole to visualise it and to make decisions based on what the car is doing. The best lap so far was lap 16 where we got 2 minutes and 42 seconds but on average we're around 2 minutes 43 to 45. I'm assuming because you haven't said anything that it's fine going a bit faster than 90. Yes, you're limited to 93 as well. At the moment we've got set up an accelerator limiter. Think of it as cruise control. We can limit how fast the car goes. So as long as you've got your foot to the floor, it'll stay at that speed. So all you have to really worry about is steering. We're always above 83. Because yep. if we drop below 83, then we're not on target at all. It sounds simple enough. 240 laps non-stop but there's still a lot that can go wrong. On a single charge, battery management is our main concern. We need enough juice to go all day and cross the finish line in time. There's also the issue of radio comms. Due to the nature of the track, we can't talk to the driver for 80% of the lap. So if any problems come up, we may not know about it and we only have 15 minutes to solve it or we're disqualified. That's weighing on our mind for sure. So at the moment we're looking pretty good power consumption wise, we're still too high for the solar to kick in. Yeah, it just means we're running a lot more efficient than originally thinking. So that, that's very, very good on our end. Very, very good on our end. We could fast forward the clock and we just kept on doing what we do. We're heading for 11 hours, aren't we? Or a better way of wording it is we've got an hour in hand. I get in trouble for saying positive words too much because otherwise I'll jinx it, but I think very good. Average speed of 91.8 k's an hour, so that's since 7 o'clock or 
Back in the old motor temperatures are good. 37 degrees. Our power consumption is good. Everything is just good. Like it's all, don't think you could ask for a better start. What do I do? Keep trying to he's make it back if you can. Come, come. He's, he's just there. No car, zero car. I power, but I'm on a hill. Copy that, we're right behind you. Try power. It's going away. I can't hear the motors anymore. Copy, where are you? Try the throttle. Try the throttle. It's, this, is, this has happened before. Someone asked Josh if he's getting any data. Okay, uh, you're back for about two seconds. And they cut out again. Yep, that makes sense. Tell us if we come back, please. I'm oh, going on, but it's super oh, laggy right now. That. Still. We have eight minutes remaining. Any update? No, not yet. Josh, you have any left? Any updating? Yes, we have stuff. Alright, copy that. issue was a false positive error that came up within the battery management system. The bigger cause of problems was the downstream effects that that caused. Problems with the powertrain and control systems that had gone into a fault state that we hadn't seen before. We traced the logic flow and where that critical error was that we could also reset. And so, yeah, we uh, used pretty much all of our 15 minutes to get us back on the road. We decided that we'd actually put a passenger in the car so that if that fault came up, they'd have a laptop and they could clear that error. We lost a lot of time. The issue became how fast can we go and can we actually maintain this pace with how much battery we have left. We just need to trust the numbers. Yeah. The numbers are in our favour. We're buying ourselves eight seconds a lap. Seven on that clock over there. An hour and 13 minutes left to go. So you don't want to get your hopes up, but it's starting to kick in. The last couple laps were really interesting. Our radio just lost all connection, including our long range backup radio. But luckily we had someone in the passenger seat monitoring the battery in the car who could receive text messages and then yell them to me. So I still could get information that way. But the guys were intentionally not telling me that uh, we were close to the end because they didn't want me to change my driving style and change the average speed by a small amount, anything like that, get overly excited. When we came to that final lap, I had to double check maybe five times that I wasn't mishearing and I wasn't going to come to a stop when we hadn't actually finished the record. But we came around that final corner and everyone was lined up on the track so I knew it was for real. Did we do it? I think we did it. Yeah! yeah. Crossing the line, that 
feeling is something I will always have with me forever. It was a pretty special moment to be there with the whole team um, after those 11 hours and 53 minutes. It was a pretty special feeling. To see it cross the finish line, it was very surreal. It's the best experience. I think anyone in Sunswood would tell you how incredible this opportunity is. And if you grab it and run with it and don't let it go, it will serve you so well, not only for university, but for the rest of your life.